Hey, good morning. Pastor Chris here. Welcome to the Poolside Chat. I, I hesitate. I don't know. I hesitate to start. I was going to say, God, where are you? And maybe that is the best way to start. Got some questions when you call out to God, cry out to God. You know, some people get... Um, frustrated for Schimmel with all the crime and hatefulness and pollution, whatever it is. God, where are you? When you see the pain and the suffering and people don't get better, God, where are you? God, don't you listen to us? Don't you even care? Where are you? And, uh, the, uh, the theological term, the biblical term, is called theodicy. It's the uh, the study of God and suffering, God and pain. And from what I've studied, pain, suffering, sin, that separation from God, free will, growth, uh, another theological term, sanctification, growth in God. They all kind of go into this answer. And one thing I want to remind you of is, uh, think of Paul. Paul in 2 Corinthians had this thorn in the flesh. We don't know what it is. But whatever it was, he begged God three times to take it away from him. What's interesting we t- tend to look over the first two times. He cried out once, please, I can't take this. Silent. Don't know how long it was between the first and second time, but he called out a second time. God, take this away, please. Help me. Be silent. We look at the... Uh, We look in Psalms where David cries out, God, where are you? Turn your face towards me. There are what's called the 400 silent years. 400 years God stopped speaking to the children of Israel. So God is silent. It's documented. We're not any better, not any worse. We're like everybody else. But why? Why? Doesn't he care? When we study, we see the reasons for this, reasons that I can't understand, and I really, really don't. I mean, I can give you lots of, you know, theological, bible answers, but I just plain don't. But I do see, looking back, um, Job. He was blessed even beyond what he had before. And God didn't answer. And then when he did answer, he yelled at him for like 20 chapters. I mean, we look at Paul and he found out faith and he grew and strengthened in God. David, a man after God's own heart, he found out he could have a personal honest relationship with God. It wasn't just ceremony and sacrifices. It was life. It was a friend. So, so we can look back and see. It doesn't make it easier if you're in the middle of it. But what it does remind you of is that God hasn't left. God's there. And what are we to do in the midst of all this stuff? We do what we always did. We cry out to God. We lean on God. We learn about God. We're reminded of how God has acted. Um, The Jews, the Jewish people, people of the uh, Hebrews, Jewish faith. One One of the things they do to this day 
as they recite stories and songs to remind them of the goodness of God. And that's what we're to do. So where is he? Why does he let these things happen? I said, I don't know. But I do know that he is there. And I do know that we can cry out to him, lean on him, let him hold us, bang our fists on the table. And that he hasn't abandoned us. Don't ask me no more tough questions. I'm kidding. Um, Great question. And I actually got a few into this one. Um, Just know and just be reminded that God is there. And remember the stories of how he acted and what happened. I pray for you if that's your question today. Um, It is tough. Keep them coming. I'm kidding about it. I didn't ask me any tough questions. Um, Let your friends know. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Excuse me. Facebook, YouTube, Rumble. And soon to be Instagram. I've been saying that for like three months. At FL Compass Church. And uh, every Wednesday, Saturday, answering the questions that you have. Guys, have a great week. We'll see you Saturday.